Hello grade 11s, welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to be looking at more electromagnetism videos, electromagnetic induction, Faraday's law, those things. We'll be doing a past paper together. I would recommend that you do it with me. So this is the past paper that I'm doing. Do it with me, pause, watch me and mark as we do the answers together. Let's jump right in. But before we go, please subscribe to my channel. I hope to help many more of you with videos like this in the future. So subscribe, like this video, let me know what else you want to see from me. Let's go. Okay, we've got a square induction coil. So when they say coil, they mean a conducting wire, but it's bent into a square. And they give me the lengths of the sides, three centimeters. Obviously, it's a square, so it's three by three, like that, three, 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 three. three. And it has 400 windings. So N is 400. So one, two, three, 400 of those. And it's placed perpendicularly in a uniform magnetic field. So you can see um, by the picture what this looks like. Here's a north part of this magnet, south part of this magnet, magnetic field lines going from north to the south, and this is actually the coil. So the coil, imagine it's a square like this, the coil is actually placed in the field like this. So you're seeing it um, from like a side view, and it's rotated through an angle of 45 degrees in 0 0.08 seconds. An EMF of 7 volts is induced or created in the coil. Right, a lot to get into, but firstly, they want us to state Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction in words. So not give me a formula, I don't want a formula, I want the definition. Here's the definition, you need to know the definition word for word. As you can see here, the memo says it's two or zero, which means if you don't get the defini de definition correct like that, you're going to get zero. So it's the magnitude of the induced EMF across the ends of the conductor is directly proportional to the rate of change in the magnetic flux linkage with the conductor. It's a lot, but I just wanted to show you that that definition actually links to this formula over here. Second question, calculate the change in magnetic flux. So first of all, remember magnetic flux can be represented by this symbol. So when they ask for the change, they're asking for this essentially. That's what they're looking for. So here's your formula. You write your formula first. Then we need to fill in everything else. So we know EMF, we know N and we know time. So you substitute in your values correctly. In some versions of the formula, you will see that N, the negative N, is on the same line. So it's on the top of the fraction with change in magnetic flux. It's the same thing. Please do your maths correctly here. So how you would solve for change in magnetic flux is you would say 7 divided by negative 400 because it's, it's times on the side. And then you would say times 0 0.08 because it's divide on the side. So you do inverse operations. And that's the answer you get. Remember, our change in magnetic flux is measured in Weber, WB. By the way, this is the same as this. It's just this first answer is in scientific notation. You can write it like this. The next question wants the magnitude of the magnetic field. Now, you first of First of all, need to know that they're basically asking for B. They're asking for B. B is the magnetic field. Now, what we just calculated was the change in magnetic flux or magnetic flux linkage, which was this. So we know the change in magnetic flux. And why would there be a change in magnetic flux? Basically, the magnetic field stays the same, the area stays the same, so there would be a change. Remember, the triangle means change. There would be a change in magnetic flux if the angle changes, which it does. So basically, what we have is this. We have that there is a final minus an initial change is always final minus initial. Now, this thing we work out using this formula, so BA cos theta. And then same thing here, BA cos theta. So we got BA cos theta minus BA cos theta, but the thetas change because the angle changes. Remember, we're rotating it. So the angle's changing the whole time. So basically what we're doing is we're looking for B. We have A, we can work out A, and the angle is changing. Another way to write this, I just took out B and A as common factors. So B and A, B and A, because it's the same in both terms. The only thing that's changing, the angles. So I can substitute in. First things first, let's just quickly work out the area on the side. Remember the length of the square coil is three centimeters. 
we need to convert that to meters because in this formula, area must be in meters squared, not centimeters squared. So we convert the sides from centimeters to meters by dividing by 100. And remember, area of a square is length times breadth or side times side. So basically, the area of the square quill will be 0, 0,03 times 0, 0,03 or 0, 0,03 squared. Okay, so that is quite nice. That's the area. We're looking for B, so B is my unknown. Area is 0, 0,03 squared. Remember this answer change in magnetic flux. We worked that out earlier. It was this answer over here. So that is negative 0, 0,0014, 0, 0,014. And then cos final angle minus cos initial angle. Now to work out theta, remember that theta is the angle between the field lines, so the magnetic field lines, so in this case the dotted lines, and the normal. Now remember the normal is basically like an imaginary 90 degree line, a line that's perpendicular to the plane, or perpendicular to yeah, the coil basically. So if you take a look at this, this is, was in my lesson on this, which is linked below, but if you take a look, and in this case we have a circular coil, you can see here's the circular coil, and the normal is like a 90 degree line, imaginary. So you can see it's 90 degrees to the coil. So if here's the coil, or let's use it like this. If this is the coil, then the normal is a 90 degree line like this. So if the coil is like this, the normal is always 90 degrees to the coil, if that makes sense, 90 degrees. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So if I, and here's another situation, you can see the normal here is that dotted line. So in this case, it's a square coil like this, just like the one in my picture. And I know that we're looking at it from the side view. So it's like an open square at the top here. And all the field lines are passing through the coil. The angle between the normal and the field lines is zero. So initially in my picture over here, the same thing is true. The angle between the normal and the field lines is zero. If I had to draw a normal on this picture, on this diagram over here, like the one in your exam paper, the normal would be like this. It's a 90 degree line. Do you see that the normal is going like this and the field lines are going like this? So initially, theta is zero degrees. But then they say they rotate it through an angle of 45 degrees. So initial theta is zero degrees. Final theta is 45 degrees. So when we substitute it into our formula, we will go final theta, 45, initial theta, zero. I hope that makes sense. Just like that. Final initial. Now, a lot of places where students make silly mistakes is how to actually get to the answer. So I multiplied these two terms together first to give me this answer. Don't round off because you're not the end of the question. Then you take this term over here divided by this one over here. You get your answer. Remember, magnetic field is measured in Tesla T. So if you don't give me your units, you don't get your mark. The next question says the quill is now rotated through an angle of 45 degrees in 0 0.05 seconds. So we still have the same angles, 0 to 45, but the time has changed. Remember the previous time was 0 0.08. Now the time has been reduced, 0 0.05 seconds. How will the induced EMF be affected? Write down only increases, decreases, or remains the same. Then we must explain. We can look at our formula to help us answer our question, and you can look at it like this. If we decrease time, so if we make time smaller, EMF, the magnitude of EMF will increase. The reason why is because time is below the fraction. So if you have something that is below a fraction like this, and if you have to make it, so if you have to compare like two, and if you have to compare it to, remember we're reducing time. So let's start with four, and then we decrease it to two. 1 over 4 versus 1 over 2, which is bigger? A half is bigger. So if you increase, if you decrease the bottom, so we went from 4 to 2, overall you're making something bigger. Okay, it's inversely proportional. That's basically what it is. So if we decrease time, EMF will increase. And this is essentially how we can write our answer. So writing it like this, EMF is inversely proportional to time. That's how we write inversely proportional. We use this symbol and write one divided by, okay? Or you can say EMF is directly proportional to one over time. Basically, it means this. EMF is inversely proportional to time. You can also say if the time decreases, EMF will increase.
Our last question, we have the north pole of a bar magnet is being pushed into a solenoid as shown in the sketch. Do you see the arrow is showing that the bar magnet is going into, it's going in, into the solenoid. What pole, which pole will be induced at point X, right? Only north or south. So remember how this works is as follows. We're pushing a north into the solenoid. We're pushing it in. So the current that is induced will create a magnetic field that will do the opposite of what we're doing. It's always the opposite. So if we're pushing the north in, we're pushing the north in like this, pushing the north in, the solenoid is going to want to push the north out. So how do you think that it's going to get the north out? Okay, so we're pushing the north in, the solenoid wants to push it out. How is it going to push it out? It needs to repel it. How do you repel a north? Okay, the north is going in. How do you repel the north? If I create another north over here, because a north repels a north. So the north is going in. A north must be created over here, close to the bar magnet, because it will repel the north that is coming in. If you need more help figuring out how to know the answer to this question, I'll link my video down below. It's on Lenz's Law, figuring out the direction of induced current and, in, and the induced magnetic field. Then it says in which direction will the induced current flow, right down from A to B or B to A. So this is where we need to use our right hand rule. So when we use our right hand rule, we do it as follows. You have to use your right hand, your thumb, you curl your fingers like this. So just like in the photo, your thumb points towards the north that is induced. Okay, so not the north of the bar magnet that is coming into the coil. So what I mean is your thumb isn't pointing towards this north, although it happens to be the same you know, it points towards the north that is induced. So your thumb points that way, just like the hand over here. The thumb is pointing that way. And then look at which way your fingers are curling. So the current is going up around the front and then down around the back, up around the front, down around the back. So what that means is the current is going like this. It's going up along here. Then it's going down the back where we can't see it. Then it's going up the front down the back where we can't see it, up the front, down the back where we can't see it. So the current is going from A to B. So your answer is A to B. I really hope this helps. I do have videos on this that goes into this in a little bit more detail, link down below. Please check out the links in the description box below for more electromagnetism, more past paper questions, and videos on other topics. Subscribe for more. Can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everybody.